this episode, we're going to have a look at how I like to develop with Docker. And there's a lot of reasons why I like Docker. Because I do work on older projects, and I do work on some newer projects. Each project has their own version of Ruby that they run, because I haven't gone around to updating them. And then there's some projects that are much older that require an older version of Ruby. And there are solutions like RVM, ASDF, or RBM that you can use to manage your Ruby versions. And Docker does go a little bit beyond that because on my local environment, if I were to get a new computer or if I were to refresh, update my operating system or do anything else on my host machine, then there is a chance that my Ruby version could break. And that's happened to me more times than I would like to admit. So a few years ago, I decided to try out Docker because I was on a M1 machine and I did have to work on a Ruby 193 application. It was much older than what the current Apple Silicon architecture would support. And initially, I did try to get it up and running, but I didn't have much luck. So that's when I decided to Dockerize the application. However, over the years, my approach to Docker has changed. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at how I like to create new Dockerized applications and just some of the aliases that I use to help manage my development workflow. And as far as working on our local development environment, I'm going to go ahead and stop this running container with a Docker Compose down. And that's going to stop it from running and it's going to kill the containers. The images for this still exist, but I'm a big believer that on my local environment, I should be able to run the docker system prune with a dash af and that's going to wipe out any kind of container or image that I had locally stored. So I have no containers and if I go to the images, it's basically all cleaned up now. And the nice part about this is that it did not touch my volume. So any kind of databases where I had a docker volume, those are all still persisted. But now I should be able to run the docker compose up and then it's going to start up the application again after it pulls down all of the images it needs and it rebuilds the containers. So it's downloaded Postgres and Redis. And it's also going to download the Ruby 322 image. It's going to go through and do all of these setup that I normally need. And once the application is up and running, we can go to our local host port 3000 and then it works. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.